Back on the MSG 150 at home presented by Chase, Bill Pito and Alan Hahn. And we say hello to football columnist for Newsday, Bob Glauber. Bob, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Bill. Good to see you and Alan. All right. So before we get to topics in the league, compare your bookcase to Alan's bookcase. Ah, I mean, there is no comparison. You know, the last time I was on here, you guys said, hey, give me something on Hahn. Okay, give me some. I got nothing because he's a good dude. But I got you on the books, Alan. I, yeah, I, no, you have way more than mine, and you've probably written most of them. <laughs> and mine are just, they're fake. I, I'll read them eventually. <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, let's talk Jets here and the situation with Jamal Adams. He's got no leverage at all, yet he's making some demands with the team, to the team. What do you think is going to end up happening? You know, I don't think they're in any rush to trade him. So I would, I would say a trade is – not likely at this time, but, and here's the big but, if a team comes to the Jets and Joe Douglas and says, hey, you know, we got a first round pick that's pretty high probably next year and we're going to give you a player or two or maybe another draft pick, then I think he has got to listen because this is going to be, continue to be an ugly situation. It kind of already is. And Jamal Adams is very clear. He does not want to be there under his current contract. And I, I don't see the Jets in any rush to give him money that approaches $20 million a year. And it feels like that should be the worst story for the Jets this week. But it isn't because now, once again, they probably don't have the best quarterback in the division as the Patriots make a move. Coincidentally, on the same day that the NFL sends another fine to them for cheating with Cam Newton. What kind of impact does Cam Newton have on the Patriots and especially that division? Well, I think it's a huge move, and potentially. Now, you have to say potentially because Cam Newton has been hurt the last two years, and he's coming off a foot injury that is still not perfectly healed. That's a big deal, especially for a guy who has been mobile, and that's been his calling card over the years, in addition to having a rocket arm and, you know, a lot of toughness. So, but, but Cam Newton at his best with Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels, it's a huge step up from what Jarrett Stidham would have been. I expect that he will be the starter at some point, whether it's the start of the season, we don't know. And if there is a season, but uh, Cam Newton, I don't think you can underestimate this move. It's just another of Belichick's brilliant, you know, just wait it out, let the market settle and, and get your guy. So tremendous move uh, given the circumstances. Newton of course is with the Patriots because Tom Brady is now with the Buccaneers what would you say, Bob, about Brady not really paying much attention in Florida to all that's going on with the virus and some of the workout restrictions that the league wants to impose on his players? It, it doesn't set a good example. And he's not the only one. There are players around the league who are working out on their own. Now, Brady, you, you got to understand, is a, is a freak. He's a gym rat. And he is a guy who needs his players around him. So I get it. I understand it. But in a pandemic, he is basically, you know, thumbing his nose at conventional wisdom that suggests you got to be more careful here. And the NFLPA was very outspoken and very clear. Please don't work out on your own because it's becoming a problem. There was a problem in Tennessee with the 49ers working out together. A couple of players tested positive there. So does not send the right message. Um, I'm a big mask guy, you know, I, masks are big and, and, taking care of each other is big, but not enough is, of that is going around in this country. And I think we're paying the price just as a, as a country because of this ridiculous surge in the summer when it should be quieting down. So, you know, Brady is part of that equation. You talk about the pandemic. Another thing that is on the minds of a lot of people this year are the social issues and, and the, you're seeing all around sports athletes speaking out about it, but also leagues taking a stand as well. That includes the NFL, and it was very interesting that Roger Goodell would talk about maybe we made a mistake a couple of years ago in regards to Colin Kaepernick and now wants to see him back on a team or would like to see him back in the league at some point get an opportunity. So will he get an opportunity, and do you expect to see him on a roster at some point this coming season? Alan, I think he will get the opportunity. Whether he takes it and ends up on a roster remains to be seen because – I don't know. No one knows what's in Colin Kaepernick's mind as far as coming back to play. You know, that, that workout last year in Atlanta went off the rails. He ended up having one at a high school nearby. It didn't work out. 
But I think there is legitimate interest in Colin Kaepernick as a backup quarterback at this point. I think San Diego makes a lot of sense. Anthony Lynn has been outspoken about it. He says, hey, I, you know, he fits our system. We don't know just yet. The key will, be, will, will come when the rubber meets the road, if it does. And that is if he accepts a workout and the conventional way to get back into the league. You work out, you show what you got, and then a team can sign you. If he's not willing to do that, you know, he, he's got to play by some rules here, and that's the football rules. Uh, but I do think there would be opportunity for him, and I do think that the dynamic has changed to the point where he'd get a job if he wanted it. Bob, uh, the NFL has issued some strict protocols about how things are supposed to be handled at team facilities. The mm -hmm. plan, though, is for training camp to start full speed ahead with the schedule as well. What do you think ultimately is going to end up happening? You know, I'm – I, I would say I'm cautiously optimistic that they will be able to start. You know, they say July 28th, they want all teams to be there. Um, the protocols are good at the facilities. The problem is what's happening in society at large in these cities. You know, look at Dallas and Houston, Los Angeles. So the, the problem is outside the facilities that is creating an issue. I think they start on time. I think they have games in the beginning. If, the, if there is another wallop we get in the fall, the late fall, I could see them closing up shop and having to postpone it or, or cancel it outright. So, so many variables we just don't know. It seems to be changing by the day. So it's really hard to predict what's that gonna happen in a month, no less, you know, six months. On that point, I gotta go back to my Jets here, Bob. And that is the season that's coming up for them. And you look at what Sam Darnold went through last year, obviously with the mono early on, that affected his season. He's now it, it, you know, in, his, in his third season where you want to start to see some progress. So you think, boy, all pressure, all eyes are on Sam Darnold. But actually, would you think that there's more pressure and maybe more attention and focus on the coaching job by Adam Gase this season? Uh, yes and yes. I think there is going to be equal amounts of pressure and expectation on Sam Darnold and Adam Gase. Um, you know, year two for Gase, year three for Darnold. This is the year for a quarterback. You know, the light's got to come on. The light did flicker uh, in year one, flickered a little more in year two once he got back onto the field. Remember that Dallas game? He was terrific when he, when he, when he came back from, from the mono. So Darnold has got to take that next step. There's no question. Now, Gase, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of attention on Adam Gase. They did finish 7-9. They had a good last half of the season. They did it on the backs of the defense. And Greg Williams and Jamal Adams, that was a defensive effort that got them through. So the offense has to get better. Darnold has to get better. If those two things happen, then I think the pressure is way off of Gase because that will mean that he's doing his job. He is... This is what he was brought here for, to get the most out of Sam Darnold. And if he starts to do that, then I think it would work out for next year anyway. Bob, talking about coaches, uh, you wrote a book about the dominant coaches in the 1980s, Bill Walsh, Joe Gibbs, and Bill Parcells, called Guts and Genius. You have an obvious tremendous insight into what makes a great NFL coach. And you touched on Bill Belichick a little bit earlier here in our chat. What makes... Belichick in your estimation so great it, is it his ability to get the most out of guys you don't think are going to end up being great NFL players is it his management of the cap what is it you know I think it's a combination of so many things the, the cap and the ability to be a his own general manager it's very rare in this in this league but I also think it's his you know his genius as a coach he knows what he's seeing he was a little kid hanging around with his father watching film when his father was at Navy. So he knows the game and he knows instinctively how to put players in the right spots. We saw that when he was with the Giants. Now talk about that book. When in that era, Bill Belichick was walking around in short shorts, you know, shaggy hair, uh, surfer boy with a pencil in his ear. And it's like, who is this guy? And you'd never think this is going to be the greatest coach in NFL history. But back then, even we knew, he was very smart. Did we know he was going to become this amazing head coach? No, nobody knew. But he's got the ability to bring out the best in players. And he's got the ability to scheme up uh, for players to work to their greatest strengths. He's not going to waste his time 
with a defense that will not suit a player who can't do the technique that he needs to be done in that defense. He just, he just won't waste his time. So he knows how to put the puzzle together as a roster and he knows how to put it together as a, a schemer in, in terms of X's and O's. All right. Hey, Bob, uh, we'll leave it there. So great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Good luck. Stay safe, man. All right. Mark Messier, his debut as a Ranger at the Garden is coming up next. And what makes a great captain? We'll discuss next on the MSG 150 at Home, presented by Chase.